welcome to Faux Stoke Channel! The Little Bird and the Mentor There was a vast land where birds of different types and colors lived in peace and harmony. Each morning before sunrise, they would wake up active and energetic and start greeting each other as if they were performing a morning carol. Then they would stand organized in flocks facing one another on twigs and start their morning chats. The first flock said, Good morning, sisters! Today our task is to pick yellow seeds from the park opposite here. And where is your destination? The flock opposite said, Today we're going towards the farm opposite here, where we will collect some of the grains that fell from the farmer after he harvested his golden crops yesterday. We need to get there before the crows seize them and leave us out of the game. Every flock wished each other the best. They agreed to meet back before the sun's final rays set. The two flocks prepared to fly and said goodbye while the other had already concluded their meeting and distributed the tasks to their members. The birds flew off in flocks. Every flock went to its destination. The birds began their task very diligently. The first flock headed towards the park, landed on the ground, and started looking for the yellow grains between the thick leaves, under them, and under the pebbles. They lifted leaves with their beaks and looked to see if there were any yellow grains underneath. Everyone in the flock worked together. Time passed and they were still searching. The youngest looked bored and shouted in discontent, Isn't there another way to search? My beak is starting to hurt! She didn't get an answer from anyone. Everyone in the flock was busy and no one turned to her except the oldest bird in the flock, who said calmly, I know that this is your first day at work. Your mother asked me to look after you. Your beak won't hurt after you learn the right way to do the job. But until then, you have to ignore it and look on the bright side. And where's the bright side in this matter? My neck and beak hurts when I lift the pebbles and the leaves and throw them away. How will the pain become less? And when? The big bird suppressed her anger towards that spoiled little bird and patted her on the back. Do you think that food comes to us without suffering and trouble? Your parents labored to provide food for you at all times. And it didn't come about without this kind of pain and toil. They used to work and do their best to provide this food for you they would work in shifts. Sometimes your father would sit in the nest with you to protect you from vultures and other creatures. And when your mother returned with food, your father would go to look for more food because those little bits wouldn't be enough and you should be fed all the time. So your mother would stay to protect you. And thus, they would alternate tasks until nighttime. And they didn't complain or get angry about it the way you are doing now. Did they continue to work like that until I grew up? Yes, until you grew up, little one, and became this age. Now it's your turn to depend on yourself and for your parents to rest a little. My parents labored a lot for my sake, and I didn't see how they labored. Then she lifted her head towards the mentor bird but why don't we find these grains on the leaves and the hard pebbles? The pebbles aren't light. I know it's hard for you to work, and maybe they are heavy. But the more you practice, the more you earn. Then after a while, all these obstacles become easy. The grains first fall on the ground. Then the wind and other forces cause the leaves to fall on top of them. The grains hide under the pebbles so we can search for them, find them, and benefit from them. But sometimes we don't find them. Instead, they get buried in the soil and dwell there and grow to be food for other creatures. Ah, uh, I see. Thank you, ma'am, 
for explaining this to me. Now I will collect as much as I can. The mentor patted her on the back and said, You're a satisfied and sensible one, my dear. I'll leave you now, and I'll go to work. And if you need anything, let me know. The little bird started to work, mimicking the way her friends were collecting grains. She kept searching. She almost gave up in exhaustion, but finally found the yellow pebbles. She collected as much as she could carry in her beak and flew with it towards the nest where there was a corner for keeping the grains. Then she returned again to the same place she found the grains and picked another patch and so on. Every time she flew, she'd remember the mentor's speech and how her parents worked all day to feed her. Each time the thought crossed her mind, her eyes would tear up and her energy would boost up. Every time she went to get more grains, the place would get darker. On the last return, it was much darker, and she heard the sounds of birds chirping from a distance. But she didn't care to know why they chirped the way they did. Suddenly, she felt someone behind her. She flinched and spun around. She felt relieved as soon as she heard her mentor's voice coming from the total darkness, saying in a passionate voice, My girl! I looked for you and couldn't find you in the birds' meeting. I got worried and started to look for you in the nest, but I couldn't find you there either. Come on, my girl. Join the bird meeting. They're talking about what happened to them today, and you can benefit from their experiences. Let's go before they go to sleep. The sun is already down. Leave the search for tomorrow, because we've had our share for today. And tomorrow is a new day. The little bird took the mentor's advice and flew with her towards the meeting, where all the birds stood organized on twigs. Every flock told the others about the things that had happened to them that day. The bird was very attentive because she wanted to learn from their experiences. The mentor also gestured that it would be advantageous for her to listen. She had never felt this happy before, despite how tired she was. Suddenly, all the birds went quiet at once, and she knew it was time to say goodbye until the next meeting, which would start before sunrise the next morning. The little bird arrived at her nest and found her parents waiting for her. She was surprised by the warm welcome they gave her. Why do you think they were happy? I think it was because she grew up and started helping her parents, and she was not spoiled anymore. Don't forget, too, that the mentor had told her parents that the girl was sensible and listened to her advice, and that she was thankful for having her parents who raised her and fed her until she grew up and became responsible like them. Their joy with their daughter learning how to work and take responsibility was more than their joy over the food she collected. And for the first time, the bird felt tired like a grown-up. And before she knew it, she had fallen into a deep sleep. If you like this story, don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to